Good morning, church. You heard the pastor. Is there a shoehorn in the place? Because I don't know how we're going to get it all in today. This is going to be one of those services that you're going to look back and say, I'm so glad I made the effort to, to be in church, to tune in on the streaming audience. This is going to be a magnificent service this morning. And we can't wait to get going on it. There's going to be kind of the service is going to run down two rails today. So there'll be, there'll be two kind of themes that we're going to work from. We have extra music today. We have a special treat. How many were here this morning when Phil Gotham warmed up? Phil Gotham got a, an ovation during his warm-up for his solo he's going to do later before the service today. If you've ever sat around Phil, you know what a voice he has, wonderful voice. And he admitted this morning in all, in that all his time at church, he's never sang a solo. So be praying for Phil, but we're looking forward to, uh, to him doing that this morning. We are going to, like we talked about the last couple weeks, people have been talking to Keith a little about COVID reflections. We're going to look back on, on the past year. Uh, we're going we're gonna to think about uh, how much pain that, that some people have been in. Um, we don't, you know, the, the, the Paul Crafts of the world, the loss that there's been. And also at the same time, you know, in Romans 8, 28, that God says he works all things for the good of those who love him. Right? Those called according to his purpose. And during the COVID, there's been good. And a lot of people talk about the good. People cooking together more. People being at home more. My wife and I, I, I can't tell you how many years since we sat down at the kitchen table and played cards. When the, when the COVID hit and we were locked in, we have a, a notebook now, 33 Friday nights where we played 500 rummy. 33. Now, she, I knew she was going to tell you. I knew she was going to tell you this for. 33 weeks, and now, you know, Friday, whether it's get, things were opening up, we're getting out on Fridays a little bit more. So now we're saying we have to make a point of trying to schedule a Friday night at home again. So some good and some bad. So we're going we're gonna to talk about the COVID. There's going to be a ceremony uh, towards the end of the service uh, where those rocks that are in the pews are going to come into play, and it's a uh, lay down your burdens uh, uh, type of ceremony. So we'll do that. At the same time, Pastor Keith is going to preach from Joshua chapter 3 and chapter 4. I recommend that you read Joshua chapter 3 and chapter 4. I forgot how much good was in there. There's a lot of sermons in, that, in, that, in those stories. So we're going to work from there. In Joshua 3, 5, Joshua says to the people, consecrate yourselves. Right? Consecrate yourselves, which means be set apart or, or to commit something fully to worship. That's what we're going to do today. We're going to consecrate this time to God because it, then it says... For God will do amazing things tomorrow. Tomorrow God's going to do amazing things. So today we consecrate this time and we set it aside wholly to God. Uh, a couple of announcements and we will dive in. Um, you have the picture of Gordy? Yeah. So the, the, the ministry that we've, we've, we've been trying to get off the ground here the last month or two of, of mailing out packages and letters of the service, this is the, f the service people, this is the first time that Gordy's been to the post office uh, with, with some, some materials for the service people. So that's going to continue if you have friends or family that you would like to be receiving packages and letters from the church, just get the names to Gordy and we'll get them added in there. Next Saturday, we've been talking about this kind of hybrid trick-or-treat Easter egg hunt. We're going to do a drive-around Easter egg hunt. There are 10 stops now. If you go to the website, you get that cool little map. There's a map of all the stops, addresses on the back. You'll pull up with your kids, and there'll be treats for the kids, and the, the people are going, going to, uh, to decorate their houses. Pastor and Linda are going to have communion at their house. So 2 to 4 next Saturday, you want to take, take advantage of that. Next week, we will celebrate Palm Sunday, as Pastor mentioned. On Good Friday, something that I don't, we haven't done regularly here, on Good Friday, there's going to be a service in the church at noon. If you'd like to come and take communion, come on Good Friday at noon uh, as, in preparation for Easter. Easter Sunday, two services, 8 o'clock, a little more traditional, 10 o'clock, a little more of, of the blended service that we generally do. So two services. It looks like probably the 10 o'clock is going to be better attended if you have flexibility and it works for you, eight, uh, a few extra folks at the 8 o'clock wouldn't hurt anything as far as making room for the people that need to be here at 10 o'clock. So if you have flexibility, 
Uh, maybe you can maybe you can help out by coming to the eight o'clock. Oh, there's so many announcements. Let's get into worship. It's a it's a busy service, a busy day, and it's good to be alive in Jesus. Psalm 95 says, "Come, let us sing for the joy of the Lord. Come, let us shout for the rock of our salvation. Come." Let us worship before him and give him our thanksgiving and extol him our praises. Friends, we're celebrating today new beginnings. As we put a past year behind us, we think about the new beginnings that come to us as believers in Jesus. Throughout the Bible, we hear about new beginnings and new starts. That's the theme of the Bible. We get a do-over. We, 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 we get a new beginning. In Joshua 3 and 4, the people are leaving the years in the wilderness, going into the promised land and crossing the Jordan River for their new beginning. Likewise, we think about new beginnings in our life. And symbolically, we're going to have a rock and we're going to take the rock to Jesus, putting the past behind us, laying our past at the foot of the cross and remembering the new beginning we have in faith. All of this we worship God because of who he is and what he has done. He will lead us forward to the days to come into a new beginning. And we know from the people of Israel, even though the promised land had great promise, there were still challenges and obstacles to face. But God was faithful. And God is faithful for us today. Will you bow your heads for our invocation? Heavenly Father, we pray that your spirit will not only be in our midst because it already is. As believers, your spirit resides within us. As a congregation, your spirit resides amongst us. But Lord, may we open our lives, clear our minds, clean our, clear our memories, that we might be able to be free to worship, free to remember. May we lay our burdens at the cross. And Lord, we come to worship you. In all these things I pray, your mighty name, your name, amen. Your name, as morning dawns and evening fades, you inspire songs of praise. Come, let us sing. Come, let us shout to the Lord. Come, let us give thanksgiving to the God of gods. Your name is great, and God, we thank you for the kindness of your life, the kindness and goodness. Please stand and join the praise team as we have a time of thanking God.
As Linda's getting ready, that is a picture of the Eastern Wall, I believe, in, uh, in Jerusalem. Next February, we're going to see that together. That's way cool. That, that's a Kidron Valley in the front side, right up the top in the shadows where Jesus would have gone through the gates on Palm Sunday. What a cool picture, Linda. Thank you for doing that. We told you, a special service.
Thank you. You may be seated. Miss Adrian's going to have a children's message for us, and uh, the service continues. Miss Adrian? Good morning. So today I brought with me my Madeline's calendar. And let me tell you, this girl, if she gets a 365 day planner, I don't know if I'm gonna be busy or she's gonna be busy, but let me let you inside this place. She has things marked down and she wants to know everybody's birthday. She's got um, logic tests and making chewies for Sandy's birthday. That's dog treats for our dog. And like, she's just a busy lady. But you know, the calendar tells us so much stuff. It marks things, right? And yesterday was the first day of spring. So it's a new season. And I thought, remember that groundhog that we met like back a month ago? Was he right? But then I thought, you know what? It's always February 2nd, and the first day of spring is always March uh, 20th. So who's in charge here? Like, it never changes. It doesn't matter if you see your shadow or it doesn't, or if you do or you don't, it doesn't matter. And you know, isn't that true that it doesn't matter what we say that seasons come and seasons go, but ultimately God's in charge. And um, I use, or I reference um, Ecclesiastes chapter three, and there's lots of verses, and it tells us about times. But the first verse says that there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. It tells us that there's a time to be born and a time to die, um, a time to cry and a time to laugh, a time to be sad, a time to dance, but that ultimately, in verse 11, let my eyes find it, God has made everything beautiful in his time. And you know, we're all in a different season of life. Whether it is the seasons of fall, winter, spring, and summer. Um, I also was thinking, we use the word season a lot. We have basketball seasons, we have seasons on TV, um, there's holiday seasons, but everything always changes. But there's one thing that's always constant. And that's God's promise that he will always love us, that he will never leave us, and that he's always enough for us. So whether you're having a good day or a bad day, a good season or a bad season, a long season or a short season, it doesn't matter because God never changes. And so the other thing that I'm thinking about, and we're talking about a little bit today with the big people in church, is this COVID thing. And I feel like we're always keep saying, we just want to get back to normal. And then some people will say this, the new normal. We don't know what that means, but we hope for it. But I want everyone to remember that it doesn't matter, again, where we are in that season, if we're close to the beginning, the end, the middle, that God is there with us, and his love is always there, his strength is always there, and his promise is always there. So let's pray. Dear God, we are always in a different season of life. No two of us are really ever in the same season of life. But what's amazing is your promises that no matter the season, you are always there. Your love will never end. It will never change. And God, I just pray that we would always find time, no matter what the conditions or the season is, that we would praise your name and that we would worship you for all the good and the love that you give. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Adrian. Just one or two uh, acknowledgments or announcements. Uh, we have our sound crew. Uh, Jacob, is this the first time he's up in the sound booth with us? Yeah, appreciate you helping us out. Brand new. Uh, Jacob Schaffstall is helping us out. The other team is still there and helping us. And uh, it's good to have a growing congregation here. Uh, before we have a brief reflection on COVID, uh, the brochures came in for the Israel trip that's scheduled for next February 18th. They're available on the pulpit on the way out. Uh, in the narthex they're available by contacting the church office but we're going to have a phenomenal trip and a wonderful time also want to acknowledge that uh, i got an apple last week a balloon apple isn't that nice just made me feel good and uh, it's kind of cool to have apples once in a while a year ago we did our first streaming service with a telephone, we had chairs jerrymandered here, and it's a wonder that anything even made it out. 
But we all developed little patterns early on before we came back to in-person worship. So the team that was a part of this, I would come in with my Lysol wipes under my arm every week. This is the first customized mask that I had. And uh, uh, Kim Peters was nice enough to make me a mask early on, and it got me safe. And we think back, all that's happened in 12 months. 33 games of playing rummy. That's wonderful. We're playing more games around the table. I think one of the challenges we're going to have is that we don't get too busy again, that we don't allow things to go back to the way they were. There's a wonderful reflection in today's Sunday paper about Erie's learned some hard lessons. And uh, that's a reflection that we need to remind ourselves. This year has been marked with reflection and change. Some days feel good and others feel strange. We've learned to work differently and love more unconditionally. We try to tune out the stress, but sometimes life still feels like a mess. We find ways to turn negatives into good and learn new skills that we thought we never could. We find ways to travel to less congested places and we meet our friends with covered faces. Hopefully this year has been filled with opportunity and we've tried to exercise and strengthen our immunity. 2020 has been like we expected, has not been like we expected, but we found new ways to stay connected. Hug your kids and enjoy the out of doors. Worry less about the very small chores. Things will get better because they usually do. Enjoy what you love and learn something new. Don't forget to pray and always be kind. Try to stay positive and learn to unwind. The story has been written, good wins in the end. Prayers for all my family and friends. That's written by Craig Alter from Cincinnati, Ohio. Another poem that I came across this week. Not everything is canceled. Sun is not canceled. Spring is not canceled. Relationships are not canceled. Love is not canceled. Reading is not canceled. Devotions are not canceled. Music is not canceled. Imagination is not canceled. Kindness is not canceled. Hope is not canceled. And God's love for his people is never canceled. Friends, I've asked people for some reflections and some memories and some thoughts. Uh, no one actually sent things in, but in talking with people, it's been an interesting year. I think back a year ago, and we began implementing 9 o'clock in the morning devotions, where daily now there's someone from the church leading whoever wants to tune at 9 o'clock, a reminder that God loves them. I remember in my own life a year ago, fear trepidation, waking up at three in the morning. Do you remember singing, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to me, happy birthday, happy birthday, and you sang that twice so that you were sure to wash your hands for 20 seconds? We've learned a lot in this past year. People ask what the new normal is going to look like. Well, Already people are asking me now that the vaccines are getting out, when are we going to begin to relax the standards here? We are still guided by the governors and the CDC guidelines. It looks like from now till Easter, we still have distancing requirements and we still have mask requirements. As soon as those begin to relax, we'll begin to relax. It looks like distancing in schools is lessening. Instead of six feet, it's going down to three feet. When they do that, we can begin to open up some more pews and, and begin to resemble back to where we were. But we're going to be guided by those guidelines. So um, you can keep asking me questions, but I'm going to always defer back into those guidelines. But with that, we're going to be creative. We're going to be uh, considerate. We're going to let family units sit more and more together than, than they have been. And uh, we look forward to worshiping. We've got some plans for this summer. We've got huge plans for the fall. We think this is a new beginning, and that's what we're celebrating today. As we look for new beginnings, let us remember the cross of Jesus. For the Christian, our newest beginning, our new life, life everlasting, begins with the cross. So we're going to invite and introduce Phil Gotham to the congregation. 
He's going to lead us in a solo. He's going to sing a solo, Old Rugged Cross. Then after a time of prayer and offering, we're going to uh, sing together. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Phil, will you join us? And uh, you're already there. <laughs> I should have shut up a long time ago. Good to have you. Thank you, Phil, for sharing your gift. I think this church is filled with unrecognized and uh, yet undiscovered talents. But uh, that was certainly a blessing, reminding us that at the cross, Jesus surrendered to the forces of this world that he would then on Easter Day overcome them. And as Christians, we then look at the cross not as a sign of defeat, but a sign of victory. And as we work our way through Lent and anticipate the Easter to come, we are reminded that it all begins, all centers for the Christian at the cross. Will you bow your heads in prayer with me, please? Heavenly Father, your word tells us that we should be thankful in all things. God, it doesn't take much thinking to recall things that we should be thankful for. So, Lord, I pray that we set aside the anxieties, the anxiousness, the, the, the strange feelings of aloneness that we've had, all the peculiar feelings of the past year. And, Lord, today we declare as Christians that we're setting the past behind us. We need to do that. And we look forward to that which is coming. We thank you for the faithfulness of having provided for us. God, remarkably so, while we've been touched by COVID in this congregation, it has not hit us like it has others. God, we thank you. 
God, we thank you for a persevering spirit. We thank you for friends. We thank you for flexibility. We thank you for adjustments in people's schedules. We thank you for family night and game night. We thank you, Lord, for encouraging us to look at the simple things. We thank you for clearing the deck. We thank you for helping us learn to do new things in new ways, <laughs> like Zoom meetings. And, Lord, while they drive us crazy at times, I was thankful this week that I didn't have to drive to Cranberry or other places for face-to-face -face meetings, that I could do them from the comfort of my home and have more time for family and friends and work and things that we put a priority on. God, today we thank you for the sunshine that's outside, a sign of spring. There was still frost in the ground, but God, the sun is shining, and it encourages us that a new day is coming. Already in our hearts and in our lives, you have given us a fresh breath of spiritual life. And Lord, as we gather together, we begin to feel the, the renewed strength of relationships between us and amongst us. God, I thank you that the relationships in this church were strong enough that a year later, as we're now coming together again, those relationships have helped sustain us. God, we thank you that your spirit is with us no matter what's going on in the world and the politics. God, we thank you for preserving us as a country through a time of riots, through a time of disruption through a time of uncertainty. And Lord, I would pray that your people will stand tall, will stand together, and will stand for you. God, we're proud to be Americans because we're American citizens. And there's so much more that can be said there. But even more than that, we're citizens of the kingdom of God. We're citizens of heaven. We're, we're your children. And Lord, I pray that from the inside out that our hearts reflect the fruit of the Spirit love and joy and peace and patience, that we show creativity, we show, we show persevering strength. We stand for what's right, we respect and fight when we must, but God, we fight for you, that your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, may this church, may this congregation, may our lives be a, 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 a sampling of what's to come. Lord, may we give thanks for where we've been and where we are. Each person in this room that I know, I've seen changes in their faith journey because of you and your faithfulness. They've gone from being at this level to that level, and they're continuing to grow in their faith and trust in God. May we be gracious and understanding with one another because we're all at different points in our journey of faith. But we all come to you. We all want to be what you want us to be. And may we use the remainder of this Lent season and then the preparation for celebrating Easter Sunday, joyous resurrection and victorious Sunday. And Lord, may we experience a newness of heart and a newness of life centered upon the words that, that Phil's solo reminded us at the old rugged cross. So Lord, as a church, I'm not allowed to say it. I wish I could that we could hold hands, but we'll hold hands in spirit today. As we stand united, as we join together in faith, may we share in the prayer that you taught your disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We're going to stand in just a moment and sing the great hymn, Nothing But the Blood of Jesus. In today's terms and cultures, this seems a bit much. But when I look at the words, nothing but the blood of Jesus, I put in the word in my mind, the lifeblood of Jesus, for God has given us the very lifeblood of himself, the very life he's breathed into us. His human blood was spilt at the cross, but his spiritual blood is new life and new vitality. Will you stand and join together as a congregation 
nothing but the blood of Jesus. the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fountain, I know. Nothing but the blood the blood of Jesus, not of good that I have done, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow, no other fountain, no, nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my hope and peace. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my righteousness. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fountain, no. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Thank you. You may be seated. Just one more comment about the song that we just sang. I have found great strength in that hymn. At first, the lyrics seemed to get in the way of me appreciating what had really happened. But as I've watched movies, often you see the hero or the heroine sacrifice him or herself, for the sake of others. Standing in front of the bullet, standing in front of the knife, standing in front of the evil that, that threatens everybody. Jesus, at Easter time, surrendered himself to the worst that evil could offer so that he could then overtake it, overcome it, and raise victorious on Easter day. And I think when I th now hear that hymn, I think about his wondrous love that caused him to want to take the bullet for us, so to speak, and to take our place and to not only sacrifice himself, but then overcome it with resurrection. It was not a sacrifice that ended life. It was a sacrifice that began life. And in his victory over darkness, he opens the door that all of us who believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ will receive the seed of the Holy Spirit in our lives. God's Spirit, the one and only God who knows each and every one of the seven billion people on this earth. And as our lives are open to him, like a new planted seed, the life of God begins to well up and offer us the promise and the hope that we as Christians have and we share. Today, the text that I have, well... I'll preach short. We have a lot to do. But you're all way too serious right now. And I just got to tell you a story about an old country parson that I know. Some of you may have heard the story. It's, it's been around for a while. But the country parson wanted to buy a new horse. His old horse was worn out. It was time to get a new one. So he went down to the livery stable and said, I need a new horse. And the, and the stable manager said, I've got just the horse for you. It's a sanctified horse. Sanctified horse, what does that mean? Well, it means that he's been trained to respond to the things of the Spirit and the things of God. And the parson says, well, that sounds interesting. What do I need to know? And the man says, well, instead of saying giddy up, giddy up, giddy up, you say praise the Lord and the horse begins to move. You say praise the Lord loud and he begins to run and gallop. Praise the Lord makes the horse go. Isn't that true? The praises of God make us go. The parson says, now how do we get him to stop? And well, that's easy. 
What do we do when we say the end of our prayer? We say, that settles it. Amen. And the horse stops just like that. The parson laid his money down. He bought the horse. He was out enjoying the, the horse for the first time on a day like today. The sun was shining. He was feeling good. He said, praise the Lord. The horse began to, to gallop down the road. He's having a great time. And his mind was lost in the thoughts of the beauty all around him. But all of a sudden, he began to see that there was a canyon, a chasm, a, 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 a cliff coming up in front of them. And the parson says, oh, no, I forgot the directions. Whoa, whoa. And the horse just kept galloping and galloping and galloping. And all of a sudden, he had a sane moment as opposed to an insane moment, which I often have. And he said, amen. And the horse put the brakes on, and they slid right up to the very edge of the canyon, inches from falling over. Whew. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I know. I've been there. I've done that. <laughs> Haven't you? Friends, I think the first sermon I preached at this church in June of 2010, or July of 2010, was from... Joshua 3 and 4. Jim Leffler said it right. There's a dozen sermons in this text. It's a great text. And in five minutes, I just want to give you the fast overview of 3 and 4. I encourage you to read it at home. Early in the morning, Joshua and all the Israelites sat in front of the Jordan River. After three days, they were preparing themselves. Jim shared with us during the devotional time or his introduction that 3.5 talks about consecrating ourselves. Before we break into a new land and a new time, we need to consecrate ourselves. We need to, 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 to clean ourselves up. These folks have been in the wilderness for 40 years. Many of them were children or not even yet born in Egypt when they left Egypt. And they're getting ready to enter the promised land. And basically, they had to get their clothes cleaned up. They had to get ready to go. Yesterday, Linda and I and Sam took a ride. We walked around Eaton Reservoir. We did some fun things. We've been so tied to the house and the, and the chores and the stuff that we've been doing. It was nice just to have a break. You get kind of dressed up and you say, huh, this is nice. We need to spiritually get dressed up before we enter the promised land that God offers us. And the people of Israel were consecrating themselves, preparing themselves. For God will do amazing things in our midst. Friends, I encourage you today to examine your lives and ask God just very quietly, God, is there anything in my spiritual life that I need to let go of? Is there anything in my spiritual life that is holding me down? Any habitual sins, any distractions, anything that I'm hanging on to? so that I can be ready for the best that you have for us in the year to come. You go on to verse 14. So when the people broke camp to cross the Jordan, the priests carried the Ark of the Covenant first. If God's people aren't willing to go first, the rest of the people should never go. I would never lead this congregation unless I am able to go first and stand in the Jordan as the Jordan River parts its way and the people of Israel as they cross the, the, the Red Sea to get out of Egypt, are now crossing the Jordan to get in. In our trip in February, we're going to be crossing just about where they crossed the Jordan River. We'll be crossing from Jordan into Israel, right around the Allenby Bridge, just south of Jericho. We're going to be here at this spot. And we're going to imagine two and a half million or more Jews sitting on the banks of the river, ready to cross into the land that had been promised them. If you remember when they first looked at it 40 years earlier, they saw the, the land and the promise, but they also saw the challenges and the giants that would have to be slayed. Friends, we're standing here as a South Harbor Creek Church, knowing full well that this year is going to bring more challenges than we can imagine, more bills than we have money for and more opportunities. We pray for a missions trip. We pray for our trip to Israel. We pray for new ministries and new opportunities to serve our community this year. But there's a promise that God will be with us, that God is challenging us. And I believe God is calling us today, this month, this Easter, to cross the Jordan River of our lives and enter into the promised land that he has promised us. 
The water from the river stopped. The land was dry. The priests and the Levites, the Ark of the Covenant, stood in the middle of the dry river as the people of Israel marched from one side to the other side. God tells Joshua then to pick one representative of each of the 12 tribes and pick up a rock, pick up a stone, and take it with you. They camp on the other side of the shore, and then they move up outside of Jericho to a place called Gilgal. And there at Gilgal, they made a monument of these 12 stones. Why? Here's what God wants them to do. These stones are to be a memorial to the people of Israel forever. It's to be a sign in the future. So when your children said, why are those rocks over there? What do these stones mean? Tell them that the flow of the Jordan River stopped, that God was faithful, that God cared for you, that God took care of you during COVID, that new things were discovered and new ways were chosen. And there we were. It's a memorial. I've done enough funerals in this church, many of them for some of your families and loved ones. There's a cemetery and a memorial. There's an urn and a memorial. We remember the life that was lived for the sake of the present. Chapter 3 and 4 goes on. Finally, it's time for the people to come out of the river. On the 10th day, they went to Gilgal. They set up the monuments. And here's what Joshua tells the people. In the future, when your descendants ask the parents, what do these stones mean? Tell them that Israel crossed the Jordan on dry ground. He did this. Why? So that the people of the earth might know that the hand of the Lord is powerful. And so that you might always respect and fear the Lord your God. You see, the monument wasn't only for the sake of the Israelites. The monument and the memory was a sign for the world to see. You see, in the Old Testament, the people of Israel were supposed to be a representative of God in a tangible form to the people of the ancient Near East. They never quite lived up to that, although they had seasons where they were a good example of God. But you see, likewise, we're to be an example to the world of what it is a Christian should be. We should be a representative and an image so the world will know about the love of God, the righteousness of God, the things of God. So today I invite you to take a stone along the pews where you're sitting. And I invite you to hold it in your hand. For some of you, you need to set aside something that's been holding you down and holding you back. A fear, a sin, an anxiety, a bother, a problem. And symbolically say, this stone represents that problem and I'm going to lay it at the cross so that I'll be free to enjoy the promise of God's blessing in the future. For others of you, this stone will represent a new commitment to do something new. We have New Year's resolutions in January. Perhaps this rock could be for you a Christian resolution that in the next week, the next month, the next year, you're going to embrace an attribute of God's love, God's spirit, God's work. You're going to take on a commitment. You're going to take on a, a practice, a discipline, a ministry. But in all cases, we're going to be putting the past behind us and looking forward to that which is to come. Linda's going to lead us as we come forward. If you don't feel like coming forward, that's okay. Just kind of make way for the people that might cross in front of you. But I would encourage everybody who's able to to come to the front of the sanctuary and lay your stone at the cross. And then as you go back to your seats, on the little tables on either side is a magnet that Barb, our church secretary, made that says, I laid my burdens at the cross. When you get back to your seat, we'll have our closing songs and we'll be done for the day. So I encourage you to come forward and to lay your burdens down. And I invite you to come as you are.
and remember that you're standing on holy ground. We need it to be holy ground because we just broke all the COVID rules. <laughs> <laughs> didn't, I didn't, didn't think that one through very well. Uh, but we're standing on holy ground. And the praise team will lead us in our closing songs and I'll say a benediction and we'll be out about our day. Since we're breaking rules, let's sing out. <laughs> <laughs>
I pray that today is the first day of the rest of your life that you'll be living in the land of the promise of God Almighty. That while there'll be bad days and hiccups along the way, that God's victory, God's power, God's encouragement will be faithful to you as it always has been. And I pray that uh, the best is yet to come. Pray blessing for a new beginning and a new day. And I pray that today will be a good day for you. In all these things, I pray blessing and grace. For those that will be excused, they can be excused by Stephanie. For those that want to stay to sing the last song, they're welcome to do that. Uh, I'll be in the narthex. God bless. Mm -hmm.